If you experience any type of swelling, edema, or lymphedema, today I'm going to list out 10 foods that you need to avoid that are causing swelling and causing you to retain excess fluid. Avoiding these foods will greatly improve the feeling that you feel inside your body, the degree of fluid that your body's retaining, the amount of edema, and will greatly improve mobility and just how you feel overall. Welcome friends, I'm Dr. Melissa Gallagher. For those of you new joining, welcome. I'm a functional medicine provider and one of my specialties is in the category of lymphatic system disorders and diseases. I'm a lymphatic doctor and I'm a certified lymphedema specialist. Today we're digging into foods that specifically clog, congest, and create an imbalance within your lymphatic system. And your lymphatic system is partly your immune system, it's also part garbage disposal system. And when it's imbalanced or we have diseases or disorders of the system, there's a lot of fluid retention, edema, or lymphedema. So let's kick off this 10 top foods to avoid category list with number one being all processed foods. Foods that are convenient, that are in the middle of your shopping supermarkets, avoid those because they're rich in preservatives, dyes, chemicals, and things that cause a clogging and congestion within your lymphatic system. Number two, any type of artificial sweetener. This includes a whole category of diet related, artificial, chemically laden, food alcohols and artificial sweeteners. If it's not a natural sweetener, avoid it at all cost. Number three is dairy. Anything that is dairy related, cheese, yogurts, milk, ugh, dairy is so mucosal producing in your body. The thing here with dairy is dairy is not great for your gut. It causes more inflammation and more mucus that harbors unhealthy bacteria and your gut has a lot to do with the state of your lymphatic system and what we eat affects our gut. So eliminating dairy, you're gonna notice massive amounts of fluid retention and congestion, especially here in the sinuses and in your legs and extremities. It goes away when you cut dairy. Number four are foods with soy, particularly processed soys. So soy lecithin, I'm not talking about like soybeans, like edamame, I'm talking about the adulterated soy. So additives that are in a lot of the processed foods, so that's why we eliminate number one processed foods, but really soy of any kind of adulterated nature, you wanna avoid. Number five, you want to avoid table salt. Not all salts are created equally, and a lot of the table salts are lacking in core minerals that actually help balance fluid retention. And I go very specifically into the salt I recommend and use in my life and recommend for my patients, and it's called Colima salt. And I have a special for any of you interested, you get a bag of Colima salt for 25 cents. So I'll include a link down below. It's worth testing and trying this salt out because a mineral dense salt will not cause you to retain fluid. And by nature, healthy mineralized salts are balanced naturally. They are not deficient or depleted or stripped or bleached, which is often what we find with table salt. Number six is a particular sugar. This is a naturally occurring sugar many, in many cases, and it's called fructose. So be really cognizant of fructose consumption. Could be high fructose corn syrup, and sometimes it's not even labeled as such, but just being aware of the sweetener fructose. Fruits also contain fructose, so you gotta be a little bit cognizant of the GI scaling of your fruits, but just know fructose is not a food that promotes the lymphatics. It actually causes great congestion. Number seven are chemically modified fats. And this category is quite broad. I'm gonna tell you the most common one that you're probably consuming every day, and it's canola oil. Canola oil, or most of the veggie oils, are horrid. They're awful, they're, they're hydrogenated, they actually use hydrogen in the processing. You don't wanna be consuming that. That is absolutely horrifying for your lymphatic system. So cutting out those types of unhealthy fats, the trans fats, and switching to things like a hemp oil, a flaxseed oil, a coconut oil, much better alternatives, even an avocado oil. Get rid of the trans fats, get rid of the hydrogenated yucky canola oils. 
nix them. Number eight, alcohol. This is a big complaint I hear with my lymphatic and lymphedema patients is that anytime they consume just a little bit of wine or even like tequila, oh my gosh, they flare up and they have massive amounts of swelling. And there's a specific reason. Alcohol is very inflammatory. It's not great for your liver. There's a lot of congestion it causes digestively. It's not great. Even though it's fermented, even though you could go clean and green with a lot of the alcohols, I still recommend avoiding it at all costs if you have lymphedema or any type of edema or swelling because it'll affect your kidneys, it affects your bladder, it affects your liver. Those are organs we want to be optimized if there's any type of fluid retention. Number nine is coffee. The caffeine from coffee is not healthy. It's actually extremely inflammatory. There are a few coffees that I recommend if you make a switch to coffee, but in general, avoid coffee if you do experience poorly functioning, clogged, clogged congested lymphatic system. And coffee is, is definitely one of those where you make a switch to maybe drinking dandelion tea. I love dandelion tea. It gets you that same rooted, kind of roasted mm, flavor without the caffeine and the mycotoxins in coffee. If you're curious about mycotoxins in coffee, I can talk for hours about that. So comment down below if you'd like to see that video. And last and final, foods that are low in protein. Protein is actually needed by your body and your lymphatic system to promote the flow. So the more protein we have, the more we're actually able to digest and break apart some of the proteins that are in the lymphatic system. So really being cognizant of the diets and the lifestyles that are lacking in protein. So avoid foods that are low in protein. And this can include, you know, the alternatives to high protein, kind of vegetarian and vegan options. You definitely want to reach for protein dense snacks that are over 12 or 15 grams per serving. Those are, are good thumbs up, but definitely be cognizant of the lack of protein in your daily diet. I'm excited to hear which foods you feel like you're eating way too much of or in unis, you know, kind of combination. Let me know, comment in the comment box below and I'll look forward to reading your comments. Oh, I almost forgot. I have a specific let your lymph flow lymphatic health masterclass. If you're curious about more tips and more ways to promote your lymphatic flow, I'm going to invite you to take this masterclass at 60 minutes. It's a serious deep dive into promoting your lymphatic system. And ultimately, if you zero in on promoting your lymphatic health, you're going to increase your immune system. You're going to decrease your likelihood or chance of developing cancer and autoimmune disorders highly beneficial for everybody to take and i'm excited to offer this class to you there'll be a link in the description box below where you can enroll see you on my next video